Welcome to a screencast that will provide an introduction to oxidation numbers. Let's start by looking at a couple of chemical reactions. This one is between magnesium and oxygen. It makes magnesium oxide. Uh, we, this is an ionic compound and we can explicitly show the charges of the magnesium and oxide ions in this compound. And when we do that, it's reasonably uh, easy to see that the magnesium loses electrons to make Mg plus 2, the oxygen gains electrons to, makes, to make O minus 2, and this is a redox reaction, oxidation and reduction. Here's another example. Zinc metal reacts with hydrochloric acid to make zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. And once again, if we explicitly show the charges of the substances involved in the reaction, then we can see that the zinc loses electrons, it's oxidized. The hydrogen ion gains electrons and it's reduced. Again, we have an oxidation reduction reaction. And in general, of course, if a substance is oxidized, it's going to lose electrons, which means its charge increases. When a substance is reduced, it gains electrons and its charge decreases. Now in examples like the ones we just did, they're pretty easy to deal with because we're dealing with atoms and ions in ionic compounds and the charges are well defined and it's very easy to track gain and loss of electrons and change of charge. But if we have molecular compounds, then things aren't quite as simple. We don't have well-defined charges, even though we still have oxidation reduction. So in molecular compounds, even though oxidation reduction occurs, electron transfer is harder to track. It's not as clear cut as when we have only atoms and ions. And so what chemists have done is we've developed a concept called oxidation number. Uh, and this is what something we use to describe and to track what's going on in terms of oxidation and reduction, in terms of gain and loss of electrons, uh, even in molecular compounds where the charges aren't that clear cut. And how this works is what we do is we assign to each element in a compound the charge that the atoms would have if the compound were ionic. So note this is kind of important uh, thing to be aware of. We treat the compounds as ionic in terms of how we assign oxidation numbers, even though they aren't ionic. So this is a convention we use. It's not what's actually happening. These charges don't really reflect charges of ions. Um, now, of course, the stuff we've talked about before is still true. Oxidation does still correspond to losing electrons, which means the oxidation number or the charge increases and reduction corresponds to gaining electrons or decreasing the charge or decreasing the oxidation number. And again, remember, if this seems a little bit backwards, it's because electrons are negatively charged. So less electrons means less negative charge, higher positive charge. And uh, more electrons means lower or more negative charge. Okay, now here are the guidelines that we use to assign oxidation numbers. For a given species, its oxidation number is assigned in the following way, and we'll uh, do several examples here of types of substances and specific examples. So first of all, if we're dealing with an element, sorry, an atom in its elemental state, the oxidation number is zero. Now remember, when we're talking about oxidation number, we're essentially saying what is the charge on the substance, even if we're doing sort of a pretend charge by treating it as ionic when it's not really ionic. But in this case, atom in elemental state, you're dealing with the element carbon, its oxidation number is zero. Even if it's diatomic, so hydrogen, H2, each of the atoms in there have an oxidation number of zero. And our convention is we write oxidation numbers above the symbol for the element. Okay, monatomic ion, the oxidation number is the charge of the ion. So if we are dealing with Ag, silver, positively charged ion, 
then the oxidation number is plus 1. If we're dealing with a sulfide 2 minus ion, then the oxidation number is minus 2. So in a molecular compound, an atom gets the charge that it would have if it were a monatomic ion, even if it's not an ion. And we'll look at several examples of this. Uh, for example, hydrogen is plus one when combined with nonmetals, min minus one when combined with metals. Oxygen is usually minus two, but it's minus one in a few exceptions known as peroxides and then it can have various positive numbers when combined with fluorine. So let's do an example uh, here. H2O is a molecular compound, consists of hydrogen and oxygen. These aren't ions, these are molecular compounds covalently bonded, but we treat them as if they would be ions, in which case H would be a plus one ion and O would be a minus two ion. And in water, note that the oxidation number of oxygen is minus two, oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one, but there's two hydrogens, so that gives a total charge of plus two, which balances off the uh, minus two charge from the oxygen. Now, here's an example of the exception. H2O2 is a peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, in fact. And notice if we had an oxidation number of plus one for hydrogen and minus two for oxygen, that wouldn't add up to zero. And so in these cases, this is an exception, hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one and oxygen has an oxidation number of minus one. Uh, notice this is not that common. You're not gonna run across too many peroxides, but um, if you do, then that's an exception to the minus two for oxygen. Uh, the other rule that we'll use is that halogens are always negative one if it's fluorine, and then usually negative one in other instances with other, uh, for other halogens, unless we're combined, it's combined with oxygen or some other halogen as well. And note, these are the charges that the ion normally forms, just like O minus two is the normal for oxygen, hydrogen plus one is the normal for hydrogen. And as has been uh, alluded to or mentioned a couple times so far, the sum of the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in a molecule or a polyatomic ion equals the charge on the molecule or ion. So we can do a couple examples of this. Uh, we could do something like maybe the sulfate ion, SO4 minus two charge. And we have sulfur and oxygen our rule is that oxygen is usually negative two unless it's combined with, uh, unless it's a peroxide, which we don't have, or it's combined with fluorine, which we also don't have. So oxygen is minus two. That's what we'd say its oxidation number is. But then notice we have four oxygens. So that's a total charge for the oxygens of minus eight. And then whatever the oxidation number or charge for sulfur will be, it has to add up with the minus eight due to the oxygens to give minus two total charge on the ion. And so of course the number that works there is plus six. So we'd say the oxidation number on the sulfur is plus six. Okay, one more, uh, how about the compound OF2? And we'll notice here we have two rules, oxygen usually minus two, fluorine, always minus one. So if we did oxygen what it's usually, minus two, and fluorine what it is as an ion, minus one, it's not going to be able to add up to zero, but fluorine trumps uh, oxygen, so to speak. So that has an oxidation number of minus one. That means since there's two fluorines, uh, sorry, there's two fluorines, so that's a negative two total charge, and this has to add up to zero overall for the compound, that means that oxygen has to be a plus two to make it work. So note oxidation numbers can be different for a, dip, for a compound, so for an element in a compound under different situations. Oxygen is not always minus two, not even always minus one. It can be plus two as well. 
All right, so let's do an example of a reaction uh, that might be familiar to you, the reaction of copper two oxide with methane gas to make copper, carbon monoxide, and water. And first of all, let's assign oxidation numbers and we'll just go from left to right. In copper oxide, we expect the oxygen to have an oxidation number of minus two. That means the copper has a oxidation number of plus two. And these, of course, just correspond to their charges as ions. In the methane, we don't in general know what the oxidation number of carbon will be, but we predict, since it's a non-metal with a non-metal, that hydrogen will be plus one. Since there's four hydrogens, that means that the carbon has to be negative four for its oxidation number to balance off the charge and have it all, all add up to zero. And notice we're writing oxidation numbers for one of whatever element we're talking about, in this case, hydrogen and carbon. We write them above the element symbol and the, to the total has to add up to, in a compound, uh, zero, but the charges or the oxidation numbers are for individual atoms. Okay, copper is the element, so charge or oxidation number is zero. Carbon monoxide, we expect oxygen to have an oxidation number of minus two most of the time. This is not an exception, therefore carbon is plus two. And then in water, we did this one previously. Hydrogen's plus one, oxygen's minus two, and that adds up to zero as expected. Okay, so what we note now is that the copper's oxidation number went from plus two to zero. And the carbon's oxidation number went from negative four to plus two. And the other substances, the oxygen and the hydrogen, their oxidation numbers didn't change. So the substances that have their oxidation numbers change are the ones that are oxidized and reduced. For carbon, the oxidation number increased from negative four to plus two. So increase here means becoming more positive, does not mean magnitude. And so increase in oxidation number corresponds to oxidation. So we'd say copper is, uh, sorry, carbon is oxidized. For copper, the oxidation number decreases from plus two to zero, and so we'd say the copper is reduced. Um, thing to note as well, the oxidation number for carbon changed by six. From negative four to plus two, that's an increase of six. The oxidation number for copper only went down by two. From plus two to zero is a decrease of two. But notice there's three copper involved in the reaction, and so three times two is six, and you'll always get total oxidation number change being the same value in terms of magnitude for the increase in the oxidation and the decrease in the reduction if you consider all the atoms involved. Uh, now, going back to something we've seen before, the substance that is oxidized is the reducing agent, and the substance that's reduced is the oxidizing agent. So copper two oxide, CuO, is the oxidizing agent, and methane, CH4, is the reducing agent. Uh, the agents are going to be the whole substance involved in the process. And that is it for our introduction to oxidation numbers.